Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is my interview with Colin Klaus and Kev G. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe? Check out cardmagiccourse.com. Do have a look at it. Don't be silly. Stop messing around. Stop procrastinating. You only live once and you're going to deeply, deeply regret it because your life will be so much more complete when you sign up to cardmagiccourse.com or at least have a look at it. Uh, it's, I'm very proud of it. It's very good, all that, but I, I would say that. So see what other people have to say. Cardmagiccourse.com. If you like this, you will love that. And talking about this, uh, this is, was a great, I really, really enjoyed this chat. I love these kind of long rambly chats uh, where we kind of get kind of below the thing we we're initially talking about, which was the refractor, which I'm really excited about. It's such a great resource for cube, ma cube magic. And if you're not sure whether you should get into cube magic or not, uh, do watch this because some people think it's too difficult for them. And believe me, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Well, you know, I used to think I couldn't solve it. There's no way. And actually, when you've got teachers like this taking you through it, it's it's a really good thing but i really enjoyed listening to the differences between colin and kev how they practice the way they think that there's a kind of real synergy uh, with their work and because they, they've got bring different skill sets to it so i think even if you're not into cube magic there's a lot here do comment below at the end of it there is a little competition that they're running and have a look at the new stuff they're working on because it's really really interesting and very funny uh in a, in a really not in a funny as in comedy way but it just makes me smile <laughs> when I think about it. Uh, so it's great. So check that out. And uh, remember, go to the end because there is a competition at the end. And any questions, any comments, do put them below because I will be uh, looking at these in the live shows, which are going to be starting again soon on Thursdays at 5 o'clock UK time in the evening. So uh, that's about all I've got to say about this because you don't want me waffling on. You want us waffling on or pretty much them. So here we go. This is my interview with Colin Klaus and Kev G. Right, thanks, Kev and Colin. Um, we just faffed around on Ecamm because I was going to be all clever and do that, and that didn't work out. I've done that twice now with interviews. <laughs> I, I, talked, I got Luke on Ecamm, and then I went, oh, I don't like it, and got to Zoom, and then we, we've just done that as well. But I feel comfortable now. But thanks for coming. Um, Pleasure. Well, thank you for inviting us. That's... Uh... Yeah, really looking forward to, uh, to having a chat with you. So, yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, well, it, it's it's in, it's interesting because I kind of you I see you you're kind of working pros, right? You're both close up, work, you know, and and do stuff. And we'll talk about that. But I came across you, Kev, first of all, really with the cube cards. Yeah. Um, which is really which we'll talk about, and then Colin, you. The ghost was the first thing that you did that I um, reviewed, but you you do the alchemy tree thing, don't you? That's well? right. I've been doing the alchemy tree with my friend Simon for the last, um, well, actually for the last eight years, but we've only started releasing stuff since the lockdown. Really, we we did this thing with Alakazam, and all of the you know all of a sudden we now started to release a lot of the things that we've kind of been working on, um, and um, it was it was like a web. We had our own website before that. But um, it just we're just not very good at our own marketing, so it was much easier to get Pete to do the marketing, so we could concentrate on doing all the all the stuff we love doing, which is all the editing and all the you know making it sort of making these tutorials look as good as possible. Um, but, uh, you know, which it was. I've been. We've actually been quite influenced by your um, uh, the way you do your tutorials as well. Oh, really? Because I yeah. I mean, in the early days, I remember watching. Yours, and this is where you, I think it was before you had your academy um, uh, thing, you know, so before you had your, um, what was it, the... Card magic course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the actual card magic course. Uh, your, you had these DVDs out, and oh, yeah. I, I, I loved them. There was just so much good information on them, on the, uh, certain all the card moves that I kind of really was, you know, were interested. And that's what I like about you as well. You, you love sleight of hand which is totally my thing. I don't, I love the idea of doing electronics and, you know, gaffs and that sort, but I just always end up doing the sleight of hand stuff because that's, you know, that's why well, I It's very interesting you should say that. And, and interesting and wonderful that you've watched my DVD. <laughs> One person, whenever someone says, oh, I watched your DVD when it came out, I go, that's, what, that's another, another chalk mark. 
<laughs> yeah, they were great, really good, really well done. Intro. Oh, it's so nice because it was it was a different world then in and uh, in many ways, and I was a different person. But we we talk about so and that. But I want to come back to that thing of um, sleight of hand because I, I had a gig last night, and, it, and there's a few things that happened in relation to that, and, and relation to cubes and stuff. And and Kev, you so did you have anything before cube cards? So no, uh, Cube Cards was my first release. It was, in wasn't it? Yeah, 2016 that came out around about then. Um, yeah, so now that was the first the first thing that I put out. Yeah, and how's that going? Is that still because because I really relatively recently it was 2016, but I recently sort of just got into it and really and actually you know talking about electronics and the amount of stuff you can do with cubes and electronics now, and I'd learn kind of Cube Smith and things like that. And then going back to cube cards, there was a kind of moment of going, actually, is this still relevant? And then when I got into it, I kind of went, yeah, man, this is kind of... Just explain the, the, the effect to people who don't know. The so, cube cards are... so, so, so basically, to, to give a little bit of background, is I, I learned how to do Takamis' one-handed solve technique. And I was like, this yeah. is good. Um, and I I picked up uh, Mark Elsden's Rubik Remembered, which was like a, a, a stack of cards. But you didn't need a Rubik's cube. It was just kind of like a trick about Rubik's yeah. Cube without using a Rubik's Cube. And I kind of thought, ah, oh, I like these two things that are like pretty cool. And I wanted to put some Rubik's Cube stuff into my set. But I kind of thought like, it's not like, yeah, it looks great. I can solve a cube, but what, where do I go from there? Or, or what do I do? And people are going to go, oh, let me mix that up or, or, or whatever. And, you know, I've, I've got nothing else. So I really wanted a, a, a sort of routine that I could do that did use a cube that did involve a, a visual solve. And I thought, oh, it'd be cool if I could create some kind of like matching effect um, using some cards. So that's where the, the kind of idea came from. And then I came up with the idea of uh, how I could make it look like all the cards were different. And I, yeah. I made myself a cassette. So I, I got my, so I did all the artwork for it and I printed myself a cassette. And then I went out and I was just testing it out, performing it and stuff. And uh, that's when I, uh, Mark Travisoni from Saturn Magic, saw me do it, and he was he was really he was like, oh, this this is this is great. Um, can we can we release it kind of thing? And uh, I was like, that that would be cool. Um, like you know, releasing a product is kind of I think when you get get into Magic, it's like you see all these people releasing stuff. You're like, oh no, that's yeah. never going to be me. I'm never going to be one of one of those people. Um, so it was kind of like, oh wow, this this would be great, but. I didn't, I didn't want to release Takamis's work because he'd put that out on his DVD, The Cube, right? So I got in touch with him and uh, it, was, it was a fairly long pro process, but, but to cut it short, I had a Japanese friend and I got them to uh, translate everything into Japanese. I sent him a message that so it was all in Japanese. And we, we had a conversation going, but it was quite long because I'd have to get stuff converted back to Japanese <laughs> and then into Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in, in the end, we, we kind of came to agreement and he was like, yeah, this is like something new. And so he gave me permission to, right. to, to do that, which also I think worked in his favour as well, because he was kind of pretty underground and not many people knew about him. Or if they had learned this, the one handed technique, they didn't know he was the originator of it. Mm. So so that's where it came from. But But the routine, really, what I wanted was I wanted something that reset instantly that I could do with a cube and I had some cards and I had like, I had a few moments of magic. So in the routine, you get someone to select a card and I hand them out the deck. They can spread or just take anyone you want. Some people, sometimes some people look through the pictures. That's fine. Some people, they just want to take a random one. So they, they take it. And then uh, I say, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, so I talk, I talk about the different competitions that are currently out there. And the one that interested me most is the uh, the re-scramble competition where you've got to not get it to a solve cube. You want to get it to a mixed cube. So there's that, that increased level of uh, impossibility and it's much harder. So so then um, uh, I, they show me the card for like five, ten seconds, pull it face down. I then mix up the cube. I match it exactly. I hold up the cube and show that it ma matches the card. Exactly. Uh, I then uh, take the uh, take the card and uh, give it a wave, or you can. There's a number of different options to do, but it turns into a solved card. I then take the cube, give that a wave, that solves. So now I've nice. got a solved cube and a solved card. But then the sort of 
the, the final kicker is then I showed the cards that they chose from and I spread them all out and they're, they are now all solved as well. Um, and that's now, I, I kind of like put that back in my pocket and I'm instantly reset now just to go to another table and I can just do, do it again. So um, it's been really popular. And I think for those reasons, it's, it's easy to learn You've got all those moments of magic, and it is a workable effect. It just resets. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to say, actually, that, that that was the first effect for me. I just learned to solve the cube, and I, I think I got cube three as well, uh, which has, you know, has some nice ideas on it as well. But that's the first effect that I got that I thought, oh, this, this is what I've been looking for, because it's actually it only uses one cube. Okay, you've got the cards. But because of the cards, you've got so many moments of magic throughout that. But I love the fact that it just used the one cube rather than, you know, where at the time there were loads of routines that had multiple cubes and used the bag. And these didn't have any of those. As I say, OK, you had the cards, but because of the cards, it gave you those those extra moments of magic. But that's one of the first things that influenced me. And that's why I got in contact with Kev after that. And this is where we, we sort of started... Uh, you know, start having a bit of communication about cube magic in general. And this is how this, how Refractor eventually came about. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's really where it was all, all started. I was really influenced by that particular effect. It was a, it was a matching effect without using another cube, which was, yeah. you know, which is, which is nice. Yeah. And, and, and actually that was great. Cause I was just about to ask you that thing of how did it go from Kev doing that to you? Cause you were doing your stuff. And that's just answered that question. And it's interesting though, because you're both workers and you're out doing it. It's it's really funny. I, I had a gig last night. And every time, I, I'm not working like three, four times a week or anything like that at the moment. I'm kind of not doing the traveling thing. So I'm working on other projects and I, I don't want to, so I'm kind of, the ones I do, I kind of, there's, there's a bit of a gap in between. And I'm getting that thing of going, right, this time I'm going to go and do this, this and I have all this stuff set up. And like you said, you know, then you just <laughs> end up just going, this would be great, I could incorporate all the electronics and do, and you get there and you go, I'm just going to do the sleight of hand stuff, even two yeah. cubes is a problem, the ba I'm going to get the bag out, I'm going to be walking around the bag, get the bag in the other cube. And that's the, the thing that, I, it, it, to me, even with the cube cards, right, you've got this five minute routine, where it's, there's, a, there's a chunk of work there, isn't there, a time but you've only got one cube and like, and even carrying another, even one cube carrying can be a pain unless yeah. you're doing a decent amount with it. You know, that's why sometimes I think, well, if I'm only going to do one solve, there's no point. it's got to be a kind of amount of stuff to justify that pocket space. Yeah. And that's the, 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 what I thought about refractor is that it's, it was, the, there was a big gap in the market with that for me of going, right. Yeah. We like Takami's Yusui stuff, which if you don't, if you're watching this and you haven't checked it out, it's such a great grounding for, because it looks so magical and it's really easy. <laughs> People think it's, it's really not hard, is it? Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's not a complicated algorithm to learn. It's, you know, if you can, I think you need to be able to solve to be able to do any cube magic really. But, it, but even if you can't, you, you can kind of work with it. Um, but just just taking that ground and, and what starting at, at the basic level and just creating this, this whole project that is only with one cube you could you, and it, and that's what, where you're coming from a sort of practical but also and you can talk about this as well but also not just simple there's loads of it's as complex as you can make it in it so t tell me about and, and neither of you can about the kind of the process of building refractor um, and what it is, I suppose, briefly, what it is for people who don't yeah. know. Kev, do you want to start this, or shall I? So, so, I mean, yeah. So, so, so basically, a refractor is a uh, so it's a, a kind of like a toolbox, really, is what we've kind of like dubbed it as, because it's not just one single effect or one single concept. It's a collection of uh, moves, of ways to force uh, certain colours or stacks. It's a way to do lot like, matching effects. It's a way, it's, it's a number of uh, new visual solves. And all of these elements are uh, taught individually so that it's not too sort of like, uh, overwhelming, but they all integrate together. So once you've learned each of the different elements, you can then use them in a kind of like modular fashion. So you can, you can mix and match the different things between the different volumes. And 
uh, the, the thing that we really wanted is to be able to turn up to a gig or even not, you know, turn up somewhere and like maybe someone's got a, a cube on the side or, or whatever and to be able to perform some purposeful routines. And I think that's another reason that I brought out cube cards is because, and a lot of releases, it's kind of like, well, what, what, why are you doing that? What's the point? There's no, there's no presentation with it. So one of the things that I, I really wanted is to make sure we weren't just doing it for the sake of doing it. It was, it had some, it resonated some way or it had that the audience could make some kind of connection and it was like purposeful. So they're like, all oh, right, okay, I understand why you're doing this. Yeah. Not just, oh, look at me. I can solve a cube real fast which I think is a problem with a lot of the stuff which is released. So, uh, yeah, as, as Colin said, um, the, the first time we met is I went down to the Magic Circle and I didn't know Colin. He came over and he, said, he introduced himself and said, hi, he said he had a cube card. So that's how we started to chat. And then we'd message over Facebook Messenger. And, uh, and then Colin had come up with uh, this, four, what was the, the, the first version of the 446 mix? which yeah. is a way to uh, to mix the cube where it looks scrambled around all sides, but just having one side which is solved to a specific colour. So that kind of then, um, and, and to be honest, Colin uh, sent this, this to me like a, a couple of years prior, and I kind of like looked at it and I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But at that point, I wasn't kind of on the wavelength of, oh, how could I, how could I use this? Like, what is... I kind of thought oh, I don't I don't think I'll use that for anything. So I kind yeah. of sort of dismissed it, but 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 didn't but didn't but then forgot about it until Colin got back in touch with me, because um, we started chatting again, and then uh, that's when when things kind of kicked off really, and the sort of refractor project uh, started, and then we went on this journey of that that originally was just going to be this little thing, but once we got stuck into it it was just kind of like these all these ideas just kept coming and coming and coming and i was bombarding colin with like oh i've got this video like video after video on whatsapp of all these different things and it kind of it just kind of grew and expanded to to what it is uh so that's in a yeah new- i have to say kid's an absolute machine with this sort of stuff because I, I, I showed yeah i showed him the 446 mix and I had a and I had a couple of other ideas like the force mix that's on there, and I had one of the routines that are on, uh, which um, is kind of inspired by Evgeny uh, Karelin's work, yeah, uh, which is um, which is also you know really really good. I mean, it, I worked out the four four six mix in the original what I had, and uh, I kind of in, was originally inspired by by Takamiz's one one six routine. But then I saw Evgeny do it. I went, and he did it a lot of the work behind his back. I went, oh, that's the way you do it. Yeah. And so that's that's what started that whole thing off, and you know, in the way that the actual performance goes, or how to perform it, and all the little subtleties that that he uses are really great. Um, and then I worked out, I mixed that with my force mix, and then came up with this monster monster routine that I could just go out and do with just one cube. Um, and that's that, that you know that was that was really my starting point, and then I sent Kev, you know, the four four six mix. But as he said, he came back almost every single day with a new idea. He goes, yeah, what about this? What about this? What about this? It was just unbelievable, uh, and that's how this project turned from being. It was only supposed to be about an hour long. It's turned to a five hour project, um, and we've even added onto our website. We've even added ways. To help you solve the cube faster and uh, stuff like that, so I think hope, if you're a cube magician, this this has to be a must, really. If this is the sort of and for me, it was what I was searching for because I don't really like, you know, Steve, as you said, I I like to go out with just one cube. Even that's, you know, you've got to have the pocket space for that. I don't wear a jacket, so I kind of shove it in my back pocket. Um, but I can now just take out this cube and just do a whole load of magic with it. And that's that's really what I want. No bag, no other cubes, just this cube. So, uh, and it's the regular cube that they can mix up if they want, and then you solve it again. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just just tons of stuff that you can do, and it's all on Refractor. 
And what's the, so that because the, the, I suppose what I wanted to know when I started looking at refractor was um, which I now know obviously, but the what what the main kind of effects on there. So have you can you demo and don't feel under pressure if if you're not set up for it. But can you demo that kind of what that four four six mix does? Or? So the so the so the four four six mix. So you could name any color, and then yeah. I would sort of put the cube behind my back, and within just a few seconds, I can now get to one color yeah. super quick. And then this, uh, and originally I had to do this that same algorithm that I just did backwards to get to the back to my solved cube, but then. Kef did one move wrong, and this is how we just this is how the 446 mix then came yeah. around to being just doing exactly the same moves. Uh, you can just go get straight back to that sold cube, and that's what's so nice about it. It's just happens super quick. And I say, if you say green, I would just do the oops, done there, uh, and there you've got to green. Right. And to get back to your soul cube that quick so nice. that's and that's the 446 mix and uh, that was our starting point for refractor and every single one of the uh, effects has come from that move um or actually no i'm sorry i tell a lie actually um there are there are others but that that was that was our starting point there's so many this if you're a cube magician that knows a stack, then this is gold dust, really. This is just such a useful thing to be able to, to know. It's the thing about being, it's being able to get back to a solved cube that's the important thing. Getting to one color, obviously anyone can get to one color from a scrambled cube, but the idea is that you can get back to a solved cube really quickly without having to solve, you know, without having to be a, a sub 10 speed cuber, basically, which I think very, few of us are you know um so uh that's so that was that was it brilliant and and kev so i want to that that, that creative pro like you you keep coming up with these ideas of you're feeding these so is that kind of the dynamic it was kind of you were feeding the idea to colin and colin was kind of formulating them it's so it was uh not i said i i would come up with uh, an idea about something and then uh, Colin would come back and say, uh, yeah, uh, like either like, oh, yeah, that, that's great. Or, yeah, oh, how about maybe you did it this way? Or or how about um, we do it that way? And like, for example, uh, one of the, the main routines on volume two, two which is cognitive illusion, uh, that was I came up with the, the routine and Colin kind of streamlined it a little bit because I was going from uh, I was go so, so basically in the routine you have two colors named and I was going from one color to uh and then and then doing uh, a mix and then getting to the second color and then getting to like a solved cube whereas Colin was like oh well once you've got to once you've got to the first color you don't need to do these moves because you can just display you've got to a second color and I thought yeah. oh yeah that's just like kind of cut that chunk out like that didn't need to be there so it was more of like we were just sharing ideas with each other and then giving each other feedback or saying, oh, how about trying it this way or or what about this? So it kind of it was kind of a, a more collaborative thing, um, even though I was kind of like I just like video load, do, do loads of videos and just keep sending bombarding kind yeah. of all these, all these things. So you want to do that effect? Yeah, sure. So so this is my routine cognitive illusion. So uh the way I present this is that I'll say, um, can, can you solve the cube? And it doesn't matter what they say, but uh, I would say, okay, well, I'm going to show you some of the, the advanced techniques that cube has used to, to solve. So uh, Colin, if you were going to solve the cube, what color would you choose to try and solve first? Uh, white. White. Okay, perfect. Uh, so Steve, um, I'm going to get you to select a different color for me. Uh, so one that I'm going to move on to next. So if you can just name another color on the cube. Red. Red. Okay, perfect. So Colin, you chose white. Steve, you chose red. Now, obviously, when it, they're in a competition, it's not just like move like that, because that would be too easy to move. It needs to be mixed up in more than 20 or so moves so that it's just random and it is a more of a challenge. Okay. And then that's covered. All right. So you don't get to see this until they take the cup off and you can look and study the cube 
and you've got some time now to look at where the different colors are on the cube and then the timer starts so uh, just like in a competition uh steve i'm gonna get you to help me with this uh, so i'm gonna try and get to colin's color which is white and looking at the cube i think i can do that in about 17 or 18 moves so uh, whenever you say go i'm going to start and i want you to just count in your head how long it takes me to get there yeah Go. Stop. Wow. Five seconds. How long, sorry? Yeah. Five, five seconds. Five seconds. That yeah. gets me to your colour white. Okay. But, Steve, uh, to get to your colour red, I already know that I can get there in 14 moves. And the reason being is that I'm using this technique called cognitive mapping. And whilst I was mixing the cube, I was also tracking where the other... Uh, colors on the cube are. Now, you might think I'm just like randomly saying any numbers. So I'm going to do this slowly so you can see I can get to your color in 14 moves. Okay, you ready? Right. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 moves gets me to your color. Sweet. Right. Okay, so, so that is um, that's uh, cognitive mapping. But have you ever heard of anything called cognitive illusion? No. No, so this is when your brain tricks you. It looks a little bit like this. Whoa. Now, let me mix the cube up again, because I know that I did that real quick. Um, so this time I will, uh, I'll try and solve it again, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and solve the whole cube. All right. And uh, what I want to do is, how, how long do you think it's, it can take me to solve the cube? I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Okay, so whenever you say go, I will go. Right. Go. Go. And it's. Wow. Nice. Fast as that. So, yeah, Joyous. That's a illusion. Amazing. Good work. That was, that was brilliant, man. I was a little bit cramped in trying to try to do it. Usually, um, yeah, usually I, I do. I usually, rather than doing this kind of move, yeah. uh, I usually throw it quite uh, a lot higher from here and then catch it like that. Um, but I just thought I wanted to try and keep it in shot. That's really super strong, isn't it? Yeah, and, and that that moment, the, the 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 first time this when when you do this move, people are just like, "What's what is?" Of course. And uh, like I, I posted some uh, short little snippets on uh, our Instagram page, which is Rubik's Cube Magicians. So check that out. But there's someone just going like, "What what should what just happened? What did he just do?" Kind of thing. Yeah. And that, that moment is just. It's just really powerful. But the other thing that I normally do as well, uh, which is quite cool, is after I've done that, um, if I'm just doing it my own, I do what I just did then, where I, I solve it using a throwing up motion again. But uh, you could use something like Michael Murray's The Solution. So you've just solved it, and then you can mix up again. We'll do this again. Yep. In fact, can you help me? And you can get someone to then solve the cube behind their back. So, so the cool thing about these routines is that you don't have to do exactly what I've just done in that routine. You can bring in other stuff you know or other parts of the Refract project and, and kind of create your own routine from it. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Colin, have you got, is that, do you do that one or have you got us kind of, I feel like, <laughs> you know what, do you know what's happening now? And this is something I've very rarely experienced and you forget actually, because I don't do loads of conventions and I'm not in an audience very often with magic. And I find, I feel, I'll, be, I'll be honest and say I find quite a lot of magic quite dull. Is that when it appeals to me, I kind of, when I was watching you then, and of course, kind of right, I was kind of in it, you know, as a, as a, and you forget about that as a magician sometimes. And I think it's so important when you're watching a demo of magic to really kind of get into that layman's, and not really try to, but just kind of go, forget all the how's it done stuff as we do as magicians and just go, right, let's, let's be involved in it. And it's, and then you realize this. The, the rarity of a strength of a routine like that, because it's got that thing of it takes you on a journey, that you're kind of listening to the whole thing about cognitive mapping, there's a kind of science to it, but then you've got the magic moment. And I think that, for me, the, the problem with a lot of magic is that it doesn't take you on any kind of journey. It's kind of, here's a thing, here's a thing, which actually probably for lay people that's fine, but for me now I need that, that something, something else. And you mentioned Michael Murray's the Solution there, which I did in my one-man show. Um, before I did that, Venom Cube and then Cuban Bottle, because it, it last minute I just went, it just worked. I kind of I had all this pressure stuff that I was going to do because I wanted to, and I just went now. They kind of, 
but actually to bring that into it again using the same you know takamis and all that sort of thing is um yeah it's really valuable well, what, so what so colin have you because there's so much on it is that what do you tend to perform when you're out and about that one or? well that <laughs> too funnily enough i think the the, the routines the the one routine that i know uh, kevin and i both do a lot and probably most i would say um uh, so I'm speaking for myself, but I think Kev does as well, is cognitive illusion into my routine, which is parallel minds, which is this sort of matching effect. Actually, hang on, can you two sex? Uh, somewhere here. Uh, yeah. um, so the idea is that I, I tend to sort of come out and I tend to do cognitive illusion and uh, then just to start to mix the cube up again. And I will normally get a few spectators involved and just say, oh, just say, stop whenever you like. Stop. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, we're not quite there. We're, like, we're not quite there. But um, to be able to solve this cube, I think I can do it in as many moves as you name. So say, let's keep this low, not to make this go on for too long, but say any number between one and 10. Uh, six. Six. Okay. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. That's it. And look, in this in this bag, which has been would normally be lying on the table or you know, all along, yeah. I've actually got another cube. And in this cube, I've can you check that out? Oh uh, no. Nice. Matches. But not just one side, that's two sides. Three sides, four sides, five sides, and all oh, yeah. six sides match 100%, which is unbelievable. And um, of course, at this point, most people thought when I said solved, that's they thought I'd actually solve the cube. So not to disappoint, from here, I'm going to try and solve the cube, but in stages. So um, in fact, can you see these three, three squares here? Yeah. What's these three, sorry, these three blue squares, rather. If you see the three blue squares turn into a square. Nice. Yeah. So, and again, that's the only pattern on this cube. So if I've got a blue square, I can also get a red line. So you've got a square, you've got a line. Fine, let me just stand up for this a little bit. Um, so watch this side here as I create a line and a square. And in fact, you'll see patterns forming all around the cube, uh, just like this, almost as if the cube solves itself. And that's normally the routine that, you know, you've got, because you've got, you've got that nice build up with, uh, with cognitive illusion into that routine. It's just a really nice set of routines where you've done this, where you can sort of explain how you're doing cube magic so fast with the whole you know cognitive mapping idea and then into that matching effect and that final solve which because they've seen the instant solves for um for cognitive illusion when you then do that slow motion solve at the yeah. end i think it sort of adds something else rather than just doing another instant i mean you i could have done an instant solve at the end but i think that just gives that another sort of element to it but that's all done with just one cube, and I, you know, that's 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 why I love those those two routines are my favourite two routines on the on the whole project. I think that's um, brilliant, isn't it? And and it's it's so great. And and you forget actually, and I think it's so important to, to see those routines perform like that because even though I've got refraction, I've been through it. When you're in the learning of it, you kind of kind of sometimes forget what the effect you get so into the kind of, I, I do, I get so into the geeking out learning the algorithms that I kind of forget what I'm, I'm kind of doing it for the sake of that, which is fine. Um, but when you forget how strong it is for a spectator, and I felt similar when I saw, I remember the first time I saw Richard Sanders doing fibre optics, the rope routine, right? I just went, I've got to learn that, it's amazing. When I learned it, I kind of forgot how good it was. And when I bought the ropes out, I always felt a bit naff, so sometimes I wouldn't do it. And every now and then I see him do it, or I see someone do it, and I go, all right, that's why I used to do it. And it comes out again. And I think that with something like Refractor, it's so easy to get so en engulfed in the learning of it, because it is challenging, you know, and we'll talk about that There's in a minute. There. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, 
that, that to check back in with, you know, to watch Kev's stuff and you, or your stuff on the page and go, oh, yeah, right, to just check back in with that, to re-motivate yourself. And I want to talk about the, the practice, well, first of all, the creation of it, because just interested to know what your process is when you are in a room with a cube trying to work stuff out. And I find that I'm not at a point with a cube yet where I know why it's all working. I, I know the algorithms, I can do it, but I can't look at it and go, oh, I should do, that's what I can't get my head around where you're actually working out what does what and at what point does I mean are you doing that Kevin and kind when you're doing that do you know or, or are you just playing and seeing what happens yeah just kind of playing really and and seeing what happens so so like for uh for my routine Decepticon on volume one which is a really really fun routine it's 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 made up of uh, the 446 mix and and uh, my uh, solve that's called the G4 solve and and really that's that that's all you need to learn and a couple of variations solved to be able to do that so so that is kind of fairly sort of simple when you think about it because yeah. you you start off with a mix cube you put it behind your back I do it one hand so I do the 446 mix one handed. Yeah. So like I've not done anything. They name a colour, um, and I talk to them for a second, and then I can come out and reveal their colour. But I've got a, a few different ways to do that. So I can. Uh, I really like doing it in the hands of the spectator. So um, I can uh, come out, and I've got the the cube like this, and I say, "Oh, you can you can you see your colour around?" So this is if they select the colour yellow, right? And then I'll ask them to uh, I'll ask them to hold their hand out, and then I'll take the cube and I'll put the cube in their hands, and then when they take their hands off, they'll see that the colour has disappeared and it's on the bottom of the cube. So, so it was kind of like for that routine, it was thinking of what different ways can can I do a reveal which feel different, but but really they're they're not they're they're very similar. All right. Mm. Um, and then finishing off with like a, a visual solve, and then for the for the other stuff. So moving on to uh, volume two, the gravitational mix, which was actually devised by uh, a friend of mine called Charles Dubber, and he's from South Africa, and uh, we got to be friends because he picked up cube cards, and and then he was on like the cube cards group on Facebook, mm -hmm. and and we got talking and discussing stuff uh, in regards to that, and. Again, the, the beautiful thing, the, the reason why I, I sort of like reached out to him, because after we started the project, I was like, oh, I, I know Charles has got this um, uh, this mix he come up with where it's like 446 mix. It's the same mix to get into it as it is to get out of it. And I, I think learning something where you've only got to learn it once to get you there and back is, is makes your life a lot easier and it's easier to remember as well. So, so then it was kind of like, oh, well, if we mix the 446 mix with this, then we can get these other other phases of a routine before you're doing that like final yeah, solve. Okay. So so then it was just thinking about uh, how how is that best presented and, and 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 I think that's the thing about the Rubik's cube, which is is really good for a lay audience because they are intrigued about like how because they can't do it. They, they and like, if you can pick everybody can do this picture back to the first point of the picture of the cube and you try to do it and you were like i don't know how to do this like you try and do one side and then how would you do it without mixing up the mm. rest mm. and they're genuinely interested in how it's you know how you do it how it's possible and uh, as i just like said kind of before like if for any point um inevitably something will go wrong at some point where but you'll, you'll make some kind of wrong move or something it, it, it happens uh, if that ever happens, my out is kind of, I'll just say, oh, do you, um, uh, if you can't solve the cube, can you? No, well, um, the, if you're going to learn, you do the basic method. And I just go into actually solving the cube yeah. and just kind of like explain it, which doesn't take very long, but they're still like really impressed just with that feat of just solving the cube. So so, so if you're doing magic where your your presentation, the things that you're saying are believable, I think they're kind of like they're, they'll listen. They want to listen to that because they're like interested in how how can you do it. So I think with all of the the, the stuff we put on the project, there's that element of like people 
of, of that kind of like wonder, even though it's like wonder about the cube, they're, they're sort of they're buying into why you're doing it, which I think is really important. Yeah, and I think it's so easy to forget, even with cards and coins and everything, actually. And I get this when I haven't done a gig for a while, like in lockdown and stuff. It's so easy to forget what, almost like what I was saying earlier, how it looks to someone that, and how impressive. How impressive doing a Charlier cut is, you know, I, I do, you know, I, I'm doing, I, I love cardistry, right? I'm not great at it, but I love it. So I can do some pretty fancy stuff. And there's a routine where I do a Charlier cut and everybody always goes, ooh, and I'm doing it because there's a crimp, right? And I go, oh, I'm going to do my fancy one under cut. And it's like, you know, it's like, it's, a, it's easy, right? It's a really, and you forget or just bring in the cards or something like that. So the fact that you bring a Rubik's Cube out, people are impressed. And people say to me, you know, when you, even when you're doing kind of, um, stuff with a Geiger cube and stuff like that, which I still think is great, you know, in certain situations, parlor shows, you know, where, where you've got that time and you've got that space and you know you can set things up and have, have kind of contingency all set up. Is that people go, oh, yeah, well, a lot of people know about it. They go, nobody knows about it. You know, if there's an odd Rubik's Cube geek in your audience, but nobody knows about the fact that you, you can have an, you know, it's just, we, we, we get so... I think, again, when we're in it, we forget about what it's like to be an audience member and how little they know, even if they search on the internet. You know, they're so... So I think, I think that's what's brought me to it, and that's why I love the, the project so much. And, and what about you? I'm interested in kind of the people's process of practice. And yeah, web, well, for me... Creativity. See, Kev, he's just such a super-fast learner. Uh, he, you know, he will just, it, it, he comes to me with an idea. I'm looking like, God, that'll take me months to learn. He's yeah. learned by next day. He's going to come up with it and then can do it all really quickly by next day. It takes me a long, long time to learn. Um, and I just, it, it, for me, my process is a lot slower. It just takes me a while to absorb stuff, to find different ways of doing it, to think about how it's done. And that's basically how, you know, the 446 mix has kind of just developed over the last few few years. And then by the time Kev got hold of it, then actually his ideas start to spurn my, more of my ideas and, you know, what, what, what we could do with it. Um, but that, uh, that, the 446 alone, the idea of that was I've just been, I've just learnt F2L at the time. So i would learnt how to solve the cube, basically. i would learnt F2L and I realised that, through doing a couple of algorithms that I learned in F2L, that I could actually get to that one color and make it look all mixed and then get back to that solved cube right. just by using these, these F2L algorithms that I'd, I'd learned. So that was my starting point for that. And then later on, I also always wanted to be able to, um, which is what the force mix is about, which is where, how, to, how to be able to mix the cube in front of somebody and make it really look like you're mixing the cube, but it's under your control, but, you know, it's under your control the whole time. So, uh, for instance, you know, where you just sort of say, you know, what I say doing to you earlier on, just say stop whenever you like. And, you know, you can just say stop there. Yeah. And I am, I'm still in my mix. And it yeah. looks convincing enough to an audience, you're doing it casually enough. So they, the, they really think that, that that's you know that's definitely mixed but you can still got that boom to get back to your yeah. sort of cue so that was uh, and that was another thing that just took me i've been working on for years and i've just got better and then actually it was the simple uh, because i started off i think a lot of people um when they start off with the mixes they start off with learning different algorithms and then trying to get people to say stop halfway through and you know sorry uh, so getting them to say stop just when they finish that algorithm but if you've got say an algorithm you know just like um like that yeah that's like six moves if they tell you stop halfway through there you're buggered you right? you, you yeah, know you kind of exactly. go all oh, right okay i've just got to do yeah. the others you know kind of undo it so my thought behind the force mix was just a lot simpler and when you learn about that i think it's just such a um yeah, it's a, and, and and you find often with magic, it's the simple things. All of a sudden, you go into these really complex method, and then actually realise the simple one is the right solution. Yeah. It just needs a bit of tweaking, doesn't it? And with that, you know, with that tweaking, that's how I then eventually came up with the force mix, and I went, oh, that's 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 the way forward. Now I'm not the only one to do that type of uh, that, you know, have that idea. People like Carl Hein, I've 
um, uh, that uh, uh, sort of explored that type of technique. And there are other cute magicians that I've met that you know that do that as well. But um, what we put on here are just my my touches on it. But that's uh, so yeah, that's that's my uh, so that's yeah. my way of. No, it's uh, great. No, no, it's exactly what it's exactly what I want. Um, and what people will be interested in, I think. And just on a practical point of view, I'd like to, for both of you, if you say you sort of learn at different speeds, and, and I'm a bit like, more like you, Colin, and I really struggle with the, when I learned that, I said, say I learned the 446, or, that's, or, or more, I think the one I've learned recently, what is it, the fireworks? What is that? Is that one that you've got? What's it called? No, it's called Spark. Spark uh, all Spark. Spark. All yeah, Spark. so I'm getting mixed up with the Aldo Columbini thing. Um, yeah, so I've just been learning that. And I just get to like, learn the algorithm, and it's there's quite a long time when it will just oh, keep going, it will come back, it will go, it will come back, I'll have to relearn it. And what's your pro? So, so say, say you've got like a, an algorithm in front of you you want to learn, um, or maybe three algorithms. Do you, what's your process? Do you kind of learn the first four bits of it and get that nailed and go on, or do you just do it again, again, again by row with music on or something like that? I mean, what yeah. for Kevin, so, you do it quite quickly, yeah. As a kid. So, yeah so yeah so so what i'm doing and and this is something that i've um that on the tutorials uh we kind of included and, and it's just the method that i personally use even when i first started to learn the cube uh, how to solve the cube is i would um so, so i first learned to solve the cube with the pdf so it wasn't um it wasn't like following a video tutorial it was uh, looking at the notation okay and what i did was i took the notation and I then made that into some words. So there's only certain letters you can have. So you've got U for like the upper layer, you've got R for right, L for left, D for down, F for uh, front, B for back, right? So when the notation is written down, I then made that into to words, okay? So for example, on one of the algorithms, I made the, the word bladder. So I know, okay, so that's gonna be a B move and yep. L, there's no A, two Ds, there's no Brilliant. E, but there's an R, right? So so what I did is I made words out of the out of the algorithm and then made a little story in my head. So I would make convert these into little pictures or or kind of a little storyline of what was happening. So that when I was learning, I could go, okay, what is the first word? For example, bladder, right? Okay, and then I'd do that, and then I go, oh, the second word, oh yeah, that was this in the story. So, so that's the way I do it. And then just doing that over and over again, it gets to the point where I don't even have to think about the words anymore. I just, it just becomes yeah. like, like muscle memory. Like I just do yeah. the moves. All right. So, so that's exactly what I did. Even when I was learning, as I said, Charles Dubber came up with the gravitational mix and I was like, ah, oh, man, like, how, how, how am I going to learn this? So this, that's what I did. And, it took me about a day, maybe. Um, but that is because I was doing it a lot. So I'd make a mistake from, from memory and, and I'd have to then solve the cube and then I'd have to go into it again, solve the cube. So, but I think if you're just doing that repetitive thing over and over again, it just gets to the point where those moves just feel right. Yeah. And you just you just do them and you don't have to think. I don't, I don't think about them now. I just know, oh, these are the moves that I'm going to do. Yeah, I don't even think about any of the the words or anything that I've got mixed, and I know that I'm into my stack now. Yeah. So, so, I, I, but, and I've done that for all of the algorithms on the project, apart from the four four six, because I found that's easy. I found that was easier just to break up into four moves, yeah. four moves, and six moves, um, and you could just count going, okay, one two three four, one two three four, one two four five six. Yeah. Um, but so, so that's. That's from my point of view. That's uh, how I found it easiest to learn. So that's what I we include in the project. But I don't know about yeah. Colin. That's great. And what <laughs> have you got? So, so when you get an algorithm, and and I think this is important because it's it's not. I I find this with card routines as well. If a card or, or when I've got to remember like a um, a set of a sequence of red and blacks or something, and there's like and it's quite easy. But for a certain trick, I've got to remember a sequence or a setup or something like that. What what it's a similar thing, right? You set that there, and you want it. You want it in there. And, what, and so, what, what's what's? So I think it's transferable skill. What, how do you tackle that? It, well, it was interesting because Kev just sort of said that he it took him a day 
Um, for the uh, for the gravitational solve, I reckon that took me about three weeks. Three Good. weeks of doing it every day and just really doing those moves. I mean, now I can just do it quite quite quickly. I you know I can. Um, that's and then yeah. that's that's how long it takes. You know, but but um, that's that's how long it takes me now. But uh, yeah, just to, it was just drilling it over and over again. But yeah, that took me about two to three weeks, I think, okay. you know, you know, realistically, it's just lots of, but uh, you were asking about what, what I use. If I'm learning algorithms, say for solving the cube, I tend to use uh, things that I recognize. Uh, have you heard about the sexy move? Yeah. Yeah. So just the, the, the I mean, the sexy move, for instance, comes up a lot in, um, yeah. You know, in cubing, and it's just you know, if you do it six times, you can rotate back to a yeah. solved cube, and it's it, it it's that type of thing where um, there are certain patterns of algorithms that that's how I I learn quicker. Um, I did use Kev's technique for the blood, you know, the 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 blood, you know, that 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 words. I did actually use that for the gravitational, and that mm. definitely helped at the beginning. But after a while, it's the it's these patterns. I just I see things in patterns more than I do in words. Yeah. So I probably learn easier with patterns than I do with words, and that's why you know I look for oh if it's got sexy move in in the middle of it, I just kind of go right. I got these three, then I got the sexy move, and then I've got the other yeah. move then. And that's that's probably how I learn best, I think. That's what I would say. And it's important, I think, because because I think some people can get caught up with learning the way they've been told is the best way to learn something, and they realise that that, that I'm, I'm the same. I I kind of it was my daughter the other day was doing some homework in my office here, which is not in my house, and it's got a combination, right? I've mm. been I've had this for three years, and she finally said, "What's the combination?" I was like. Because I know the pattern, <laughs> so I have to kind of draw yeah. it, <laughs> you know, every day for three years, pretty much. It's just like, so I think it's, yeah, it's important. And like, exactly. If anybody said to me, oh, um, can you like, tell me what the algorithm is for, for one of these things? I, I wouldn't be able to do that. And even, yeah. if I was, even if I was trying to explain to someone how to solve the cube. No, I can't do it. I've tried. I can't. I, I, can't, I, I always mess up because... Because you just get into that point where you just it, you, your hands just do it, and if you try and do it slowly, something goes wrong, and you're like, "Oh no, like it, it's gone wrong for me." So, so I think yeah, when you get to that stage, it's hard to go back to the point of when you were start trying to learn and trying to sort of like teach someone what to do. Yeah, and that's my biggest problem with cube magic at the moment is that I've learned obviously the 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 simple stuff I can I can actually even when I'm solving under pressure I sometimes mess up and I've been doing F2L for a long time if you don't know by the way F2L is the kind of more advanced it's a semi advanced method without knowing the 56 algorithms or whatever it is in the have you ever done have you done that by the way have you done the one where you cut out the end bit and learn the 56 different I like cut, cut so so I What's it called again kind of like use the beginners method OLL OLL and PLL isn't it uh, yeah, but I do OLL and PLL, but there's the one where you have, like, the, you've got the bow tie and the, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Yeah. The fish. The fish. All that. You can have two look OLL, which is what I use. That's I what I do. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, same with me. That's what I do. I tried to learn all the 56 algorithms, as you say, but I just kind of thought, actually, that's not my slope. But my slope yeah. is the F2L. And I, in fact, I was I was doing it this morning, and that's where these you know these um, these the the go cubes and the Geiger cubes are really good because the, especially the go cube it really tells you what your what your slow at it says the F two L part took me twenty seconds everything else I did in about five you know OLL fired through that in about five seconds PLL five seconds yeah. and my F two L was just super you know it's just that's what I just can't seem to do to get better at I'm trying to get better at because I'm trying to learn uh, look ahead, but I find look ahead so hard. Because uh, just it, explain what that is to people. So look ahead is so once you can do F2L, which is you know learn, being able to do, uh, solve the first two layers all in one go. So you do the white cross, and then you're just get, getting these uh, the the edge piece in the corner all in one go. So once you can do that, you you need to be able to do that as quickly as possible and. Uh, once you've got the algorithms in your head, like we were just sort of saying, you just kind of do them automatically. And once you've learned them automatically, 
you, as you're doing one algorithm to put one piece in, you're looking around at what the other pieces are doing and going, oh, right, okay, I've got that corner and that edge that is over here and over there. I know how to put that in. So you, as you then automatically go into putting those two pieces in, you're look, already looking for the next two pieces. Yeah. And that's what look ahead is. But to be able to do that, you need to slow right down. Uh, you almost need to just do it slowly and i find that so hard that's the one thing that i'm having real trouble with i'm yeah. i'm a thing i'm an average i've done it in 27 seconds that's my personal best wow. but i think 40 seconds is my average still i can't seem to get very much below that i sort of any it's anywhere between 35 and 45 seconds that tends to yeah. be you know if, I, if you have over 10 that that is you know that seems to be my, my regular time which is which is still fine, you know. As, as a as a cube magician, I think that's that's all you need. If you're if you want to go on to proper geeky speed solving, then you've really got to learn all the other bits because it's yeah. all about shaving a second or a fraction of a second off each move, you know. And that's the thing, isn't it? Is it is it worth spending the year learning all them and nailing it for for, for adding you know half a second? And you yeah. were you were saying, Kev, that you did you you. Um, you, so you did, did you say you do the basic solve but super quick is that yeah yeah so so yeah i've just learned so i i just learned the beginners method and kind of thought yeah. um oh like i don't need to learn how to do anything faster because because now like my average solve speed is probably about 45 seconds amazing um, and that's just using the beginner method now i might um kind of without knowing be using some of the kind of like f2l sure. sort of things or look ahead kind of things yeah uh, it's it intuitive isn't it that, yeah. realizing it but um colin has put together like a whole series of videos which i am currently working through um to to help me improve my uh, my speed solving okay so that's called uh, level up and these are the, the this is like the free course of videos that we're offering on on our website that you can sign up for for free brilliant um so I've been working for them, and I think even just like something as simple as having like the same starting point when you're going to solve the cube. So let's say, for example, you're going to you solve the white. What I always used to do is I would solve the white on the top. And that's just how I started learning it. But but now I solve it with the white on the bottom in the same orientation. So I always, always start now with yellow on top and blue in the front. And it's just knowing as well, like without thinking, I know that red's here, orange is here, green's yeah. on the back. Where yeah. before I didn't, I didn't think about, I didn't think about that. I was just focusing on white and yeah, me too. Not worrying about the other colours. But once you, once you get in your head, like you know where the colours are, things start to sort of connect a bit yeah, sure. better, and you can, you can get a bit faster. So even some of the basic stuff like that really helped me out. But I say I'm, I am still sort of like progressing through those, but I found them really useful as well. Yeah, and I think it's important to know for people because some people say, "Oh no, you know, it's like me." I was kind of I knew the basic method, and I was like, "Oh no, I've got to learn." I, my F two L and Tula OL is no quicker than I can do the basic method. <laughs> it just, you know, I thought it was going to make it all quicker for me. But again, un unless you kind of go right, I'm going to commit, commit, commit. Maybe not do any card or coin magic for for a year, and just, you know, and I, I think that's that's it. And the, um, and you've got, have you got a how to solve tutorial on? So uh, what Colin's done, it's, it's not, well, it is kind of a how to solve, but it's yeah. not, we, we didn't want to sort of regurgitate stuff, which is on a million YouTube channels yeah, already. Sure. Um, we wanted to, to, to put something new that was going to be useful for someone who has, can solve the cube basically yeah. already. And how can they make that solve the way that they solve the cube more efficient and yeah. faster? Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. I'll pass it over to Colin because I, like he's done all the videos, um, but we wanted to we wanted to like essentially bring all of the the things that like Colin had learned originally when he was like scouring, spending time learning how to solve the cube into one place. And I don't think there's anywhere where it's got like that kind of here is uh, some tutorials that go from here to here that can take your cubing yeah to the next level. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean, what, what uh, all the, the thing that I had in mind for it, basically, was if you can solve the cube in roundabout, you know, do using the beginner's method in about, um, say, a minute and 20 seconds, that is, I think that's, that, that's, that's a good starting point. You know, I think most, if you can get to that, that's when you can start to learn 
um, or the refractor stuff. And I think that's when it will be useful to you. And, uh, and I don't think it didn't take me that long to get to that stage of where yeah. I could solve uh, to about one minute 20. But I then had to learn F2L. But for me, F2L, as I say, I'm a slow learner. So it took me then another two years or so to, yeah. to like really start to do it. You know, I learned to OLL and PLL at the same time as well. Uh, and really all it's done is got me from 120 down to, as I say, 40, yeah. 30, 30 yeah, 35, pretty, 40, yeah, yeah. No, which, is, which is still better. It's still much better. And, um, and actually that's the other thing with Kev's, and Kev makes this really entertaining because I've seen him do it when he, he he actually just solves the cube in front of it. So, so if he messes up, he solves the cube and he makes that entertaining because he just yeah. sort of explains what he's doing. Whereas I tend to do the blindfold solve. I tend to, you know, I don't kind of go, oh, just watching me solve a cube, it's just going to bore you. But I'm not, I don't make it that entertaining or whatever. So I think oh, I'm going to try and do this blindfold. So I use Mark Elston's blindfold. Yeah, solve. that's where I first learned. The, the and and, and that's, that, that, that's my out. And that's what's, it's so good to have an out for the Rubik's Cube, because you are going to mess up, you know, yeah. and I, I still do now in, in routines that I've done a million times, you know, it's just that, that I, you are going to mess up. And if I do, I just kind of go, damn, messed up. And so I give out the cube and go, well, actually, can you mess this up? Uh, sorry, can you make, mix this up and you mix this up? And I'm going to yeah. try and do this blindfolded. And then I do a blindfolded, solve it, and then go back into the trick that I was doing originally, like cognitive illusion or something like that, you know. So, um, so I've got off the subject now, haven't I? Uh, no, you what, haven't. No, not um, at all. No. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Level up. That's right. So the idea of level up is that it's uh, it's a shortcut. Um, well, sorry, it's not a shortcut. It's a bridging um, tutorial between your the beginner's method and F two L. Yeah. So it doesn't teach you F two L, but it teaches you a couple of things. That will that will hopefully make your solving the beginner's method faster um, for the first two layers, and then I teach you to look OLL and to look PLL. But there a lot of the especially for the OLL they use, uh, which is the uh, the uh, so the yellow layer. I use algorithms that I've taught you, or bits like the sexy move that I've yeah. used a lot in the first in in that you start to use for the first part. So it makes it a lot easier. And I'm quite chuffed that I came up with that, that sort of method. Um, and it, I think if you spoke to a Cuba, they go, no, that's not the way I would have done it. But I think, you know, I've had a lot of good uh, feedback on it that sort of said, it's really made me think a bit differently about the cube. And it's, it's definitely helped me get faster. So I, I don't think it's the fastest method, but I think it definitely helps you to get into learning algorithms quicker and to recognize algorithms in patterns like I was talking about earlier. So if I see the sexy move, I know I just learn the bit before it, the bit after yeah. it, and then go, all right, now I've got the sexy move or the sledgehammer or you know one of these other moves that, that I teach. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, what, that's, that, that's what Level Up is all about, basically. Brilliant. Yeah, and it is, and it is great. And I, what, honestly, what Kev was saying earlier about not being able to teach it—it's really hard to teach. What you've nailed, I think, is it is taught really clearly. You take time, and that's what a lot of I always try and do in my teaching. It's you can't. Sometimes it feels when you're teaching like you are oh, they're going to get bored, but no, it's the opposite. You need to really give people chance to process, especially with cube magic and yeah. some card magic stuff. It's like no, stay on this for a bit, and and you you explain why things are happening, and it's super clear. And like I said, I didn't want, like, I'm not just saying this because you're here, but, you know, but, it, but I think it is an important resource for people for that reason. And for people like me who do find it challenging to learn, like, give me a bit of paper and I can go off and snuffle away, you know, for, for days on that. But some cube stuff, I found it really hard to learn. But that was, yeah. Thank you. Actually, sorry, that just brings me on to one other subject. This is the reason, because I edited all the videos and I found it really important because I, I tend to, I download everything and stick it on my phone because that's how I learn it. I, you know, I've got my phone on, on me all the time. And one thing I wanted to do was have all the algorithms above. And the reason for that is so that I can take screenshots. Yeah, yeah. Of, of, yeah, that's so exactly I, what I've done. And I've put them yeah. in my Evernote. <laughs> well, yeah, well, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then put them into my yeah, notes and stuff like that. And then so I can, I can put the, everything up in sections. But I think it's so important to have the algorithms written above so I've got some sort of, so I can take a screenshot 
and just go just refer back to that rather than having to watch the video every time as well so i've just got those sort of little notes and that that helps me learn it quicker so that's why we've done it the way we have and that's where we stick the algorithms above and quite often i'll be in the starting position so you can probably get the starting position me yeah. in that starting position and then just screenshot the algorithm and hopefully that will help you out to sort of solve be be able to learn all these algorithms quicker as well yeah, and it does. It really helped me because I would just go onto my Evernote on, on the cube, my cube bit and go, right, that, do, 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 right. and I can just refresh. Uh, so, all right, so we, we'll, we'll sort of knock it on the head in a minute, but I want to know what, what's next. So, Kev, what's, what's next uh, for you or the project or, you know? Yeah, so we, we've got, uh, so something we, we haven't announced yet, but we have uh, set up a shop. So the address is going to be a shop, or it is, it's live now, shop dot rubik's cube magician dot cut it k and oh, i'll put that below thanks yeah but basically what we wanted is um so i know colin earlier demonstrated you could do kind of like a match thing if you had like a little key ring but uh, we also wanted some ways that where you could do a uh, matching if you didn't you like literally take nothing else now one thing that we mentioned on the project is you could send a photo to someone beforehand or have a photo on your instagram or something like that but I, I thought it would be cool if we could have some some other other reveals. So we've got on our online shop, you can get a T-shirt. So uh, or a number of different T-shirts with different stacks. And so yeah, Colin's yeah. actually wearing one. Yeah. And I was gonna I was gonna put in earlier and say, oh, it just match it to your T-shirt. So when he yeah. did, it, done, it, yeah, he could have done it to his T-shirt. Great. Uh, so we've got like embroidered versions, which is what Colin's got on, or some printed ones. Uh, the, the one that I really like um, and I, I have loads of fun with is I have the reveal on my socks. So nice. this will this will match the my ma when I do the matching routine, uh, I'll, I'll match it to my socks. So I'll uh, show them. That's brilliant. It's got, it's got the front, uh, well, one side and the other side of the cube as well. And I've actually got two. I've got uh, a different. Uh, stacks on different socks as well cool. and I've also come up with uh, uh, an idea so you can you can do the matching routine but then when you solve the cube and I do a variation on I've got my own uh, slow motion solve called dispersion uh, which I do all the time but um, what I thought would be cool then once you've got a solved cube I then go and show my socks again and the cube solved oh nice so, so I've got that and uh, just for like casual settings as well uh, I've got uh, I've got a cap and on the back. So this is a, a really nice looking cap. On the back, I've got an embroidered little cube there. Yeah. So again, just like a casual thing, you can you can do a, a solve so. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, and there's a few other items on there. But the thing is that I can I say actually just super quick. This is I wanted something that you know if I if, if you're out and about that you have Rubik's Cube Magician. Now, uh, this, I don't know if this looks backwards. but No, 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 no forwards. It's great. Is, uh, uh, Rub Rubik's Cube Magician. I wanted something to say that if you've got something like Rubik's Cube Magician on the back of your T-shirt, it encourages people to actually ask you to show you a trick with a yeah, Rubik's sure. Cube. They see you with a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. You know, they, so I, I wanted something like that. I recently, we've even had the idea to say... Um, Rubik's Cube Magician asked me to, or asked me to show you some Rubik's Cube magic, yeah. something like that on the back, which kind of, because I know a lot of people are shy about wanting to show somebody a trick, but if somebody asks you, you kind of go, yeah, all right. I'll... Depends on context. Most of my gigs have come from that. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Yeah. We're just playing yeah. around with something, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, uh, so yeah I just, I, I, I love the idea of um, just encouraging people to ask you to do some magic because if you're forced to do stuff then i think you just end up doing it and being put under that pressure is sometimes good um because yeah. i'm not i'm not great under pressure um you know a lot no. of the time but um but i think uh, yeah i think anything like that helps and they, if you've got that as a reveal as well i think it just makes it super strong but uh, sorry kev yeah, yeah, yeah. carry on no well think? i was just gonna kind of like sort of pick up on what colin was saying about and um, doing some people and like when we went to do, film the trailer so we went to we went into london to film the trailer and um i was very much like oh no, i, I want to go and like perform like perform because colin hadn't actually seen me uh, even though i had been performing and and for anybody who doesn't know i'm a secondary school teacher so dur even during the covid period i love you <laughs> uh, even during the covid period the thing the thing was even when we were kind of still working on the project i was actually able to go on road test all the routines because Great. 
uh, I've got you know an audience all the time in school, different different people that I can that I can go and do stuff. So it allowed me to sort of like fine tune the thing. So um, when we uh, went to London to film uh, the trailer, and uh, Colin hadn't seen me necessarily perform them; he'd just seen the the stuff that I'd sent him on video. Uh, I think he was kind of like a little bit sort of he knew that they were going to get strong reactions, but I think he didn't realize like how strong like people reacted and and that once uh so in the middle of london i was like oh yeah well i've just got to go and show these people and once i was showing one people like more people would come or they go oh can you show me or like people would be getting their phones and stuff out and and mm. it's just amazing once you start once you yeah. start performing it's like how many people start to come and uh, and want to get involved with it yeah. Um, but I'll go off on a little bit of a tangent now. I just remembered another thing that we've got in the shop is uh, we've got some of these magic mugs. So basically, uh, when you put in like your tea or hot water, it's gonna it it changes. So this is another reveal. So um, on the front of the mug, I'm uh, I can't remember what it says. It said uh, I, I might look like I'm listening to you, but in my head I'm doing cube magic. Yeah. Cool, um, yeah. So again, just like a sort of casual thing when you're having a like coffee or a tea with some uh, friends, you can you can have the the cube mixed. And then on the other side, it's the reveal of the cube in the pattern, yeah. which are like just another little quirky thing. It's great, uh, but I love that kind of stuff. So, so yeah. And, it, um, and are you, you sorry? And you, um, no. Is there anything? No, actually, I'll do that question in a minute. Is there anything else that you want that you got coming out, or that you other than that the, that stuff? And we will. I will reiterate that i'm going to put if you're watching this all of the links below so do check the links out cheers yeah so um i just remember one thing that we were we were going to say actually is that uh, we were going to run a uh, a little competition so anybody who comments or asks the question on this video uh, they will be entered into a competition to win a cube and this is one of our recommended cubes now we have got uh, cubes that we think are the best Rubik's Cube magic. Now, I know yeah. a lot of people say, oh, RD cubes. Um, and I can kind of see from some aspect why people might say that. But but both myself and Colin don't think they are the best cubes to be used. No. To, to, no, they're great for some things, but they're totally not for the one hand. Yeah. So. If, you're, if you want to utilize uh, any of the RD uh, gimmicks and stuff, then then perfect. Yeah, just use that. But I think... And if I was if I was going to do something on stage where I'm using Venom Cube or, or whatever yeah, like that, I, right, yeah. I would use those. But you know, if you are doing walk around magic or tables or mix and mingle or whatever, and you're just using the cube, I think there are better cubes that yeah. that are out there. And now uh, the cubes like technology has come on so much, you can get uh, most of the cubes now have got magnets in. Yeah. So they're kind of like locking lock in place. So. Um, you know, when you when you turn the cube, it's just going to lock in yeah. position. And it's a subtle no, thing, isn't it? It's not like a. It's a. It, no, yeah, it's, it's so and, and and they're really smooth, they're really smooth as well. And just uh, just feel really nice. So so uh, yeah, we've we've got some of our favourite cubes, and we're going to be giving away three. Uh, it's a a thunderclap V three uh, M, which is a magnetic version, and it just feels really nice. Um, it's not it's not too expensive to like it, it, it's definitely the cube we would recommend if you wanted to start uh, having to play around doing some some cube magic we definitely recommend this cube but we have got a section on the website for recommendations and it's it's on there with all the and you've got links and stuff on there that's great yeah yeah, yeah links I think that, uh, yeah. we've got recommend all other recommended cube projects that that we have use ourselves that we'd recommend uh, so that's all on there. Um, and where, what website's that on? Where, so that's where's on that? rubixcubemagician.co.uk. Great. That's so that's really the only uh, available to, uh, to, yeah, to purchase Refractor. Um, and and, and it's, there's tons of information on there as well, which might be useful to people who want to perform other cube stuff. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of like, like what's next for us, well, what we would really like to do is we would really like to um, write a Refractor book so Can't do it. Can't do it. I mean, it's a massive. It's a, that's a massive kind of like task, um, and it, like I found in the past, just like writing up like lecture notes and stuff. It, you've got to really be, uh, you've got to really be in the the, the headspace yeah, to like, sit yeah, yeah. down and make yourself do it. So we want to do that, and we've been we've come up with other ideas. 
um, that with uh, that could be potentially like a volume five of Refractor. Maybe we might just keep them and put them in the book. Uh, we haven't quite decided yet, but but there's that. And then uh, we've got some other little projects going on. So I have got um, a really cool gimmick that uh, you. It doesn't necessarily look like a gimmick, but a really cool gimmick to be able to force something. Um, nice. Which again, it's like no electronics or anything, but. Uh, for example, if you wanted to use it for a Rubik's Cube and you wanted to like mind read a colour with that, because a lot of the routines we um, say, OK, but think of a colour and a lot they say a colour. Right. But if you wanted to to do it without knowing or seemingly knowing what colour they've chosen, then you could do this. But it's not restricted to Rubik's Cube. So it could be could be for anything. Right. So working on that at the moment. Um and then there, we've got some other we've got some other things that we're we're talking about as well. So like coin stuff, card stuff, uh, other bits and bobs. I don't know if Colin wants to sort of add in more information because I know he's he's working on quite a few things. Uh, but but there's, there's lots of other little things in the pipeline as well. Yeah. Yeah, great. And Colin, you had Ghost, didn't you? Which I reviewed, which I really liked. The, um, thank you. The yeah, thank you so yeah. much for uh, reviewing that. Uh, you were the first person to review it. So I'm really chuffed you did. Uh, and it was great. And uh, so that's, and I'm, I'm hoping to make a ghost too. Um, oh, nice. And uh, and Kev's already put loads of our ideas into that. So we'll probably be, you know, possibly um, uh, be releasing that together. And um, and yeah, yeah, who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see what, what, what happens out, you know, from, from there. But um, I've also got some more alchemy tree stuff, but I'm sort of, um, because I, I'm sort of, now, now torn because I do it, some stuff with Kevin, some stuff with yeah, Simon. Sure, sure. So it just, yeah, just, hard. just it, it, you know, it is hard sort of sort of juggling everything. But, um, but I, I love doing this. I love teaching, um, and I love. I've, I've just come up with so much stuff over the last ten years that I'm just dying to put out. Yeah, uh, that I, you know, I work in my own sense. Um, that I, this is this is what I'm really enjoying. And you know, like what you said, I don't do tons of gigs at the moment. I do a nice steady amount, which kind of just keeps keeps me going. But this is what I love to concentrate on. Yeah. And you know, this is really the whole cube thing with Kev has just really inspired me to do more of this. And um, uh, so uh, this. Is the, uh, the 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 project I've done with Kev is the biggest thing I've ever done, as the most intense thing I've ever done as well. But because Kev's such a machine, he's a real pusher. Where you know, so uh, it, it, hopefully it won't be long before we get something else out soon. Brilliant. Well, let me know. And it, before we go, and hang around afterwards after I've said goodbye. But before we go, is there anything else? Any more links? Anything you want to share with people? Uh, no, I think no that's, that, that that's it for the moment. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Um, I, th I think just like the, the website, which is rubikscubemagician.co.uk, the shop, which is shop.rubikscubemagician.co.uk. And then you can also uh, find us on Instagram. And our handle is uh, rubikscubemagicians. So there's an S on the end yeah. for that one. And you'll find us on there. Um, but the other thing to mention as well is that anybody who purchases Refractor, we have got a Facebook uh, group as well which is pretty active with other people who have put um, their ideas or thoughts or or questions and and also lots of performance videos as well um, and I've, I've been making sure every time I go to a gig I'm taking a camera so I can try and get some footage that I can I can put on there um, and the, the the cool thing is as well like uh, about a fact is that you can mix it with other stuff so you know as you yeah mentioned, sure the, uh, the start Steve I do uh, at wedding at a wedding I'll do Cuban bottle but I will mix it with my routine perceptor so um I will uh, essentially I'll ask the uh, the bride and groom to think of uh, some colors and uh, and talk about you know like the, when the cube solved that's kind of like perfect a bit like their their perfect day and you are like the perf perfect couple so they've named a color I've then asked them to hold up their hand, they've seen a mixed cube. Um, the groom, for example, puts his hand on, the bride puts her hand on, and then when they take their hands off, it's matched to their their Brilliant. colours. Kind of like, and I say, oh, well, that's because like, opposites attract or whatever. But that's just a lead into then a uh, cube and bottle. And before before I've done that, I've I've taken I've said oh, I've got um, a, a bottle here that goes in the bag. I've got um, a mixed cube and I've got a sole cube. Which one do you want to use? So they've then selected what cube they want to use, which I then go in to do this routine. 
And then uh, I say, oh, it'd be perfect if we could just bottle up this moment and this perfect day uh, with everybody. And then I'll pick up the, the, the bag with a cube. They'll use their hands. And then the, the nice. cube that was left in the bag is now in, in the bottle. So so there's like loads of instances like that you can, you can merge yeah. these things together. Um, I've lost my train of thought of what No, I was... no, great. No, no, that's good because that's just got me thinking um, now. No, I just yeah. if there's any, if, one, any, any other... So your Instagram is what uh, with magicians, uh, Facebook is. Sorry, I just remembered what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, so the, the the link for the Facebook group is once you've purchased for a, a refractor and you log in, you'll see that there's a link on on there, um, so that you can you can join it there. Um, but what I was going to say is, anybody who purchases refractor, what me and Colin are going to do, we're going to do some uh, some online workshops for like volume one, volume two, volume oh, nice. three, volume four, which is the deal spark one. So anybody that purchases that in in the near future, we're going to be doing some like an online Zoom uh, workshop whereby. Uh, and this this goes for anybody who's already purchased refractor as well. Yeah, yeah sure. You can join in. We can have like a discussion. Um, any anybody's got any questions or or wants to ask anything about like any subtleties or how we might present stuff or anything different, then then we're gonna we're gonna add that that on. So you'll be getting that as well, and then that will be added onto the the refractor website for anybody who misses it or can't join in at that time they can then access that as well and, and see all the content there. Brilliant. That's great. Guys, thanks a lot. I know it's your Sunday and you've got stuff to do and I really, really appreciate your time and sorry for the old faff with Ecamm at the beginning. Um, oh. But everybody, again, I, I will top and tail this, but check out the links below. Um, you know, when people put stuff out on their own, it's a, I know what it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's without having that with people behind you to, to push it for you. So, um, and it's a great project. I really, really do believe that. So, Thanks very much. Uh, have a great one. Thanks, guys. And, thank you uh, very much. It's really good. See you soon. Yeah. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. And don't forget to to leave a comment or a question on this video to be good point. In chance to win uh, win yourself a, a magnetic cube. One of the ones we recommend. Brilliant. All right. Take care. Thanks very much. So remember, like, subscribe, and comment. Do the comments. Enter the competition and check out carmagiccourse.com, of course, because without that, there is no this. And if you love this, you will love that. Like this, you, what does it say? If you like this, you'll love that. It all works, doesn't it? Have a lovely day. Take care.